Hello everybody, welcome you all in my channel, Mr. Learning Blog. Today in this video, we are going to talk about what is heat depletion temperature or HTT. So, friends, let's get started. What is the definition of heat depletion temperature? The heat deflation temperature is defined as the temperature at which a standard test wear that is 5 into half into 1 by 4 inch deflates 0 0.010 inch under a stated load of either 66 or 264 psi when heated at the rate of 2 degrees Celsius for minutes. Then what is the significance of heat deflation temperature? HTD is used to compare the elevated temperature performance of the materials under load at the stated conditions. HTD values don't represent the upper temperature limit for a specific material or application. The data are not intended for use in design or predicting endurance at the elevated temperature. Then the test methods, specimen and conditioning of HTD. The test method of HTD is ASTMD. SIS 48 and ISO 75-1 and 75-2. The test specimen should be 127 mm that is 5 inch in length, 13 mm that is half inch in depth by any width from 3 mm that is 1 by 8 inch to 13 mm that is 1 by 2 inch. Conditioning should be 23 plus minus 2 degree Celsius and 50 plus or minus 5 percent RH for not less than 40 hours prior to test. This is the diagram of heat deflation temperature. The heat deflation temperature that is HDT apparatus contains specimen supports that is metal supports for the specimen of 100 plus or minus 2 mm and immersion bath then deflation measurement device weights that is 0 0.455 megapascal that is 66 psi plus or minus 2.5 percent or 1.82 megapascal that is 264 psi plus or minus 2.5 percent and temperature measurement system then we'll discuss what is the procedure for heat deflation temperature first we have to measure the width and depth of each specimen then position the test specimen edgewise in the apparatus. Position the thermometer valve sensitive part of the temperature. Stir the liquid heat transfer medium thoroughly. Apply the loaded load to the specimen and lower the assembly into the bath. Then adjust the load to obtain desired stress of a 0 0.455 megapascal that is 66 psi or 1.82 megapascal that is 264 psi. 5 minutes after applying the load, adjust the deflation measurement device to 0 or record its steering position. Heat the liquid heat transfer medium at a rate of 2.0 plus minus 0 degree Celsius per minute. 
record the temperature of the liquid heat transfer medium at which the specimen has deflected the specified amount at the specified five stress. Then how to calculate the heat deflection temperature? The weight of the rod used to transfer the force on the test specimen is included as part of the total load. The load P is calculated as P equal to 2 S B D square per 3 L where S is maximum fiber stress in the specimen of 66 PSI or 264 PSI. B is width of the specimen. D is the depth of the specimen, L is the width of the span between support, that is 4 inch. This is the results and conclusion of our study. And what is the result and conclusion of our study? A bar of rectangular cross section is tested in the edgewise position as a simple beam. Load applied at the center to give maximum fiber stresses of 66 or 264 psi. The specimen is immersed under load in a heat transfer medium provided with the means of raising the temperature at 2 plus or minus 0 degree Celsius per minute. The temperature of the medium is measured when the test bar is deflected 0.25 mm that is 0 0.010 inch. The temperature is recorded as the deflection temperature on the flexural load of the test specimen. Then what is the factors influencing the HDD? A study of on annealed that is heat treatment specimen is usually lower than that of annealed specimen. Specimen thickness is directly proportional to STD because of the inherently low thermal conductivity of plastic materials. Higher the fiber stress or loading, lower the STD. Injection molded specimen tend to have a lower HDD than compression molded specimen. Compression molded specimen are relatively stress free. So guys this brings to the end of the lesson. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope you like this video and if you did please do thumbs up and share it to other people. Also, if you are new to this channel and want to get more such useful videos, consider subscribing this channel and also hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button so that you are notified every time when new videos are uploaded on this channel. And if you have any queries, just comment me.